I'd like to welcome you to the introduction to Denoise AI. In this video, I'll be going over all of the preferences and tool options that you have access to so that you can have the best possible experience using Denoise AI. I'll be working in a clockwise direction, so we'll start with the preferences in the top left, then go to the tools on the top bar, followed by the settings on the right, and then over to the masking controls on the bottom. Now I'm using a Mac for this video, but just about everything that I cover will be the same on Windows. Let's begin by accessing the preferences. The first setting allows you to specify a prefix, which will go at the beginning of the file name. And then you can also customize the suffix, which will go after the original file name. If you want to retain which AI model you used for the image that you process, you have the option to append the processing model as a suffix. The next two settings apply only when you use Denoise AI as a standalone application, as opposed to sending your photos from a host application like Adobe Lightroom Classic or Photoshop. If you enable apply auto lens correction, we'll attempt to apply a lens correction profile to your photo based on the metadata. And if you open up your raw or DNG file in Denoise AI as a standalone application, we will attempt to apply a camera specific DCP profile. This will help provide more accurate color and tone. But it's important to note that currently, if you save out your file as a DNG, the raw color corrections will not be applied. Enabling the allow anonymous data collection will provide us with anonymous information about your computer hardware and how you use the application. Absolutely no personal information is sent and none of the information that we use would ever be sold or used in any marketing purposes. The information sent just helps us improve Denoise AI. When you enable auto update preview, anytime you zoom in, pan around, or change one of the sliders or AI models, Denoise AI will automatically process the change. If you have it disabled, you'll have to manually update your preview. The preview background color allows you to specify which color you want to use as your background to help make your image pop. And then you can specify whether you want the control panel to apply to the right or to the left. And by default, it's on the right. The next two settings are probably the most important ones to pay attention to because it'll have the greatest impact on the performance of Denoise AI. The first is AI processor. By default, you might see the AI processor option set to CPU. If your computer has a GPU, we highly recommend selecting that because that'll have a really big impact on the performance. For the allowed memory consumption dropdown, our guidance is as follows. Computers that have up to four gigabytes of RAM should use the low setting. If your computer has between four and 16 gigabytes of RAM, medium is optimal. And if you have more than 16 gigabytes of RAM, select high. Because my computer has 16 gigabytes, I'm gonna select medium. And that's it for the preferences. Now let's look at the tools at the top. The first button is brighten. With some photos that are especially dark, it can be difficult to see the noise reduction being applied. If you click on that button and the image is dark, we will automatically brighten the shadow areas to make it easier to see the noise reduction. With the zoom dropdown, there are several presets that you can choose for convenience. So if you click on 100%, that'll automatically zoom to 100%. Selecting zoom to fit will zoom the image out so that the entire image is visible. There's also a slider that will allow you to fine tune your zoom. So if you drag to the right, that'll zoom in and dragging to the left will zoom out. Next to zoom is a button labeled original. If you press and hold on that, that will show you your original photo without any noise reduction applied. Letting go will show you the processed version. You can also view your original photo by clicking anywhere in the preview area and holding. So here I'm clicking and holding and I can see my original. And when I let go, the processed version is restored. Now let's take a look at the view modes. The default view mode is the single view, which shows your entire image in the preview area. The next view is the split view. In split view, your original photo will always be shown to the left of the slider bar. The processed photo will always be to the right. You can hover over the bar and then drag to the left to see more of the processed photo or drag to the right to see more of the original photo. The next view is side-by-side -side view. Side-by-side -side view splits your preview area evenly so that your original photo will always be on the left and the processed photo will be on the right. In split view, if you move or pan your photo around, both sides of the preview window will show the same area of your photo. The final view is comparison view and it's arguably my favorite view in Denoise AI. Comparison view provides you with four quadrants. 
In the top left quadrant, you'll always have your original photo. The remaining three quadrants will show three different AI models at once, making it really easy to identify which one performs best for your photo. The active quadrant will always have the AI model name highlighted in blue, and in this case, the lower right quadrant for a low light is the active quadrant. Clicking on any other quadrant will activate that one and give you access to the settings for that model. Now you might notice that we have four AI models on the right, standard, clear, low light, and severe noise. Currently, you can only view three models at a time in comparison view. So if you wanna preview a fourth model, in this case, it would be severe noise, select a quadrant that you wanna change and then choose the AI model that's not currently displayed. In this case, again, it's severe noise. When I click it, severe noise will process in that quadrant. When you find a model that you like, you can double click it to open it up in a larger view. Here we opened up to the side by side view, but I wanna go ahead and change this to single view. And I'm gonna zoom in to 100%. When I'm zoomed in, if I wanna pan around, I can either click and hold to move the image around, or I can click in the focus box within the navigator and move around. Below the navigator are the four AI models. If you hover over the tooltip for that section, you'll get a brief description of what each model is best suited for, but I highly recommend experimenting with each of the models, regardless of whether they fit in one of the particular categories. Each model has its own set of controls, so you'll notice how severe noise and standard have sliders, whereas clear has different buttons, and low light also has sliders. So be sure to choose which ones work best for your photo. Next, you have the fine-tune settings for the selected AI model. You'll notice an auto toggle switch. By selecting it, Denoise AI will automatically analyze the qualities of your photo and select settings that it thinks would be optimal. Of course, you can override the settings whenever you want, suited to taste. Below that are two additional sliders for post-processing. Recover original details will bring back original information from your photo if you want to find a balance between the processed version and your original version. And finally, the color noise reduction slider will remove color noise that still appears in your photo. On the bottom right corner of the preview window, you'll notice two little icons, a smiley face and a neutral face. This allows you to tell us whether you're really happy or less than thrilled about the performance of a specific model with your photo. Submitting this information to us is 100% anonymous and will never be used in any sort of marketing purpose. It does greatly help us improve the quality of our models though, so we thank you in advance if you do use it. Before we click on the Save Image button, I wanna show you the masking tools in Denoise AI. To access them, just click on the mask button on the bottom. Masking allows you to control exactly where you have noise reduction applied to your photo. On the bottom left, you can control whether you want to add noise reduction to a specific area of your photo or subtract it. Next to that is the edge aware option, which will allow you to create clean strokes with your masking brush. Next, you have your brush parameters. Radius is your brush size. Softness controls the feather of your brush and opacity controls the overall strength of the brush. To the right, you have a checkbox to show or hide the overlay of your masking brush, making it easy to see exactly where you're painting. The options dropdown gives you further control over whether you want to fill your mask or delete it. And finally, you'll have a thumbnail showing you a preview of your mask. So let's say that I want noise reduction applied everywhere except for the eagle's eye. I would go ahead and select the subtract brush, and then I would draw on the eagle's eye here. And then I'll deselect the overlay option so I can see the effect. If I decide to change my mind and I want the noise reduction applied to the eye, I can turn on the overlay just to see again, change my brush to add, and then brush that back in. When you're done masking and you want to commit the changes, click on the blue apply mask button. But if you want to drop out without any masking done, you can click on remove mask. Now that we're done processing our photo, it's time to click save image. You'll be presented with several options. The first of which is the image format. You can select JPEG, TIFF, PNG, or DNG. And a reminder, if you're working in a standalone workflow and you opened up your raw or DNG file in Denoise AI, if you save as a DNG, those raw color corrections will not apply. They will apply if you use JPEG, TIFF, or PNG. In this case, I'll select JPEG. 
when working with JPEGs, you will also have the option to specify the quality of the JPEG. You can further refine the file name of the output file. You can choose which color profile you want to use and then where you want to save that file. If you select source, the output file will be saved in the same folder that the original file was located in and custom allows you to choose which folder you want to save to. With that set, just click save to commit the file. And that's how you use Denoise AI. I hope you found the video helpful. Thanks a lot.